الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Assalamu alaikum. Uh, today uh, we are here to discuss a very important topic of advice for her, which is advice for the wife. And before I go to the main topic, I would like to say a few things in the introduction. Firstly, I want to address our sisters who are attending or who may be listening or watching this later, that let not shaitan come to you and say this advice is given by a man so he doesn't understand women's issues. Because the Prophet ﷺ was sent as a man. All prophets والسلام, were men. Yet Allah told them to say advice to the women and everything that is delivered by Jibreel alayhi salatu wassalam who is the best of the malaika, the angels to Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam who is the best of messengers is from Allah. So let not shaitan from men and from jinn and from humans come to you and say that men when they give you advice based on the Quran and Sunnah and the sayings of the ulama you shouldn't take it because it is advice given not by a woman just like shaitan comes to many of our brothers and says that alim can't talk about our country because he's never been there then we shouldn't take knowledge from anyone because the Sahaba never been to Birmingham. The Prophet ﷺ, to my knowledge, never came to the UK. These are all Ikhwan, brothers and sisters, Talbisu Iblis. This is to prevent people from taking good advice. That's number one. Number two, Today, the advice is going to be for the wife because last week I was told, uh, and you probably know it better than me, it was advice for the husband. So sisters, do not think that this advice is one-sided because the advice that I will give you, inshallah, to the best of my ability is because I was requested to do so because the brothers who organized these talks, may Allah reward them and enable them to organize more beneficial talks in the future. They have a program that addresses these issues to different parts of the family. For that reason, if you hear this talk in isolation, do not think that I'm only talking about the wife because there is a program because it is possible someone may, someone may hear this talk or see it in isolation. So they may think, because shaitan works full time, he doesn't take lunch breaks, he doesn't have sleep, he works all the time, he works, he has a lot of servants from humans and jinn. They all work for him whether they like it or not sometimes, whether they realize it or not sometimes. So someone who sees it in isolation may say again, why is he only talking about me, about me as a wife? Because last week was advice for the husband. Number three, dear sisters, respected sisters, Allah said in the Quran that it is not proper for a believing man or woman 
ما كان لمؤمن ولا مؤمنة إذا قد الله ورسوله أمرا أن يكون لهم الخيرة من أمرهم that when something is decreed by Allah and his messenger and decreed qada Allah said one because the decree of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wassalam is the same as decree of Allah because he doesn't speak of his desire as Allah said in surah al-najm wa ma yantiqu anil hawa in huwa illa wahyu yuha he doesn't speak of his hawa his desire imagine the prophet sallallahu doesn't speak of his hawa how about now people he only says what allah gives him so dear sisters do not think that what allah has decreed for you is bad for you because allah has revealed laws that protect you he legislated the Sharia that is unprecedented in the history of mankind. Never before was it seen that the woman is protected to such a degree as it is in Islam. And do not listen to the shayateen of humans especially, who say that the woman in Islam is oppressed that the woman in Islam is not given her rights, that the woman in Islam and everything, everything, you know the story. Do not listen to these people because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed a whole massive big surah called An-Nisa, the women. There is not a single surah in the Quran called Ar-Rijal. Some brother, when I said that, said to me, no, there is al-mu'minun. The believers, I said, that includes women. There is not a single surah in the Quran called al-rijal, the men. So do not think, sister, you are a worshiper of Allah. Allah loves you more than your mother and your father. So don't think that when Allah says and the Prophet Sallam says something that Allah will leave you alone and you do it for him. Would your mother leave you alone in a difficulty? She would never do such a thing. Would your father do that? He would probably, not probably, definitely choose to die himself then anything happened to you. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Prophet Sallam said, loves us more than our parents for that reason i wanted to say this before we go any further because when we give advice especially coming from a man shaitan comes to the woman or when advice is given the other way around when the wife gives sometimes to the husband shaitan comes to him but like i said it was done last week so i don't want to talk about the husband today it's about the wife for that reason, it's very important to bear this, what I said in mind. And this, all I say is not what I have achieved. It's just I take from the ulama. The ulama are the ones who teach us. First of all, when uh, now we go to the main topic, I would like to highlight some of the great wisdom behind marriage, Islamic marriage. Because there used to be what uh, ulama call ankihatun fasida. Before Islam, woman was exploited. And of course, any woman that is not in an Islamic environment, even if she is among Muslims, but the rule of Islam is not applied to her, even in her own family, she is being exploited because Allah created her weak. And Allah made men stronger. Someone who says it's not true, we can do an arm wrestling match in gloves. So we don't commit haram. Because there are people who I think they are mad, really. I've been seeing them since I was young. 
They say some of them are not Muslims, some of them are unfortunately Muslims. They say no, men and women are the same. What is this statement? How can do men get pregnant? I don't know such a thing, even though they say oh, there's someone got pregnant, man, that's not possible. That's not possible. And many, many other things, things that people reject. And that, of course, is done with a purpose. With, for some people, some they are ignorant, they follow those shayateen. So Allah created the woman different to the man and weaker. There's no point saying, no, no, it's different. She's the same, mashallah. Look at all armies around the world, which are women, mashallah. All armies, 90% or 99 are men. Why don't they compete with Usain Bolt? 100 meters, let them. It's no problem, they're the same. So this argument is totally, totally, not just by our Sharia, but by common sense. Some people have lost it. So the reason I'm saying that is Allah has brought marriage and laws in the marriage that protect the woman. And the surah, surah al-Nisa, and other surahs, not only in Nisa, he laid down laws that give the woman what she was not given before, and she was not given after by those who don't fear Allah. So some of the wisdom in marriage is to, for them, for the man and the woman, to satisfy their sexual desire, which is naturally present in them, in a lawful way. Another is to have children that worship, know Allah and worship Him. Because a person who knows Allah and worships Him correctly is a good member of society. And Allah loves those who do and spread goodness on the land, in the land, rather than spread fasad, spread corruption. Also, it increases the Muslims, which is not very appealing to some who hate Muslims. They want the Muslims to get smaller and maybe even disappear. That is a better scenario for them. That's why I want to advise everyone here. They say to the wives, I noticed because they said it to my wife on a number of occasions, to do cesarean section when there is no need at all to do it. Because cesarean section limits the number of children she can have. Whether it is a policy or just some rogue doctors or whatever, I don't know. But every doctor should be checked. And every situation like that should be checked. That's why in many countries in the world, in Muslim countries, they try to prevent and to, to talk the women and introduce laws that don't allow the, the men to marry more than one wife. In some countries they say you have to get a written permission from the wife, which you'll never get. Maybe she will say yes, okay, then say no, I changed my mind, no written, sorry. No stamp. Okay? All of this ikhwan is directed to making the Muslims less. The number of Muslims, because the Prophet ﷺ said, marry Marry those women that love the husband and they give birth to many children. Because he said, I will be more than other prophets in followers on the day of judgment. That is why now people make, they laugh at families who have many children. And that is not correct. So one of the reasons for marriage is to increase the number of good people. Another is to increase the number of ways we can do good by having re relations and relatives to different people. So if we increase the number of our relatives, if we marry into a family with lots of children, that means they're all our relatives. So if we do good to them, Allah rewards us. So that's 
some of the wisdom behind marriage, the institution of marriage. So in marriage, before we go to the marriage itself, before the woman gets married, she must try and choose with the help of Hawali, who normally is the father, they must try and choose the best person. And the Prophet ﷺ said just very simple thing, which most of you probably know, if not all, and that is, مَنْ جَاءَكُمْ تَرْدَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ Who comes to you asking for your daughter in marriage or sister, more normally it's the daughter, whose religion you are pleased with and whose character you are pleased with, then marry him. If you don't do it, the Prophet ﷺ said, he didn't just stop there. There will be fitna, which we see now. Arid, widespread fasad, which we see now. In many countries, they make conditions. Allah never even said them. The Prophet ﷺ never said. Those conditions run sometimes into A4 pages. And the Prophet ﷺ didn't say that. Also, he said regarding a woman to marry one that is religious. The same applies to the man. So don't let the shaitan fool you if you're not married, sister. If someone comes and says, your parents say, who should fear Allah, your family, they must fear Allah. Every one of us who has a daughter or a sister, we are responsible for, or anyone else who is a female, we must fear Allah. We will be asked about her on the Day of Judgment. Because are we doing a business on her or are we, do we want her to have a good life? Some families, they would do business because for them, everything is a business. Masjid is a business. Uh, daughter is a business. Her, his mom is a business maybe. Because he sees everything a pound sign. Pound in his eyes, you know. Because he says, if you come say, how much mahar can you give? I can give 500 pounds. Oh, it's 500 pounds. If you add another zero, then we are talking. So the brother doesn't have 5,000 pounds. No, get lost. Or they say, mashallah, inshallah, use Allah meaning get lost. He himself got married maybe for five pounds. Five pounds maybe, Allah alam, if you search, it's good to search, you know. Then they say, oh, you're too young. He got married when he was 17. I always ask brothers, when did your parents get married? They say, he was 17, she was 16. I say, mashallah, tell them that. Because he's 24, he's too young. All these ikhwan conditions, they're not in the book of Allah. And do you have a degree? So what if I don't have a degree? Who cares? Does Allah care? If you don't have a degree, you can't survive. Mashallah, you survived. You can't even read English. You can barely speak it. You know, I went to do a wedding somewhere. I can't tell you the place. You might recognize it. But it's typical of most weddings. So I'm supposed to do the wedding. The guy is telling me in his language something. I said, well, who is this? They said, he thinks you are Bengali. I said, mashallah. I really look like a Bengali, mashallah. <laughs> no, Juan, what is this jahl? Jahl telling someone who came to do wedding what to do. Where are we going? He says, if you don't have degree, get lost. You have nothing. You have nothing, zero. You can't even speak English, yeah. So these, we have to fear Allah. I say this because I don't have a chance to say it to them. These are things which ulama tell us. We're not saying get your daughter away for nothing. No, but we are saying fear Allah, follow the sunnah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Umar said to people, the Prophet's daughters didn't get as much mahar as you people are asking, he said to them. Prophet's daughter, your daughter is better or Prophet's daughter Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Prophet's wives are better or your daughter? Alayhi salatu wassalam. 
Aisha said how much mahar all of them got together. Now people don't fear Allah. They stipulate conditions and the Prophet ﷺ said, the best mahar is the one that's easy. So if a man is a millionaire, ask him not 5,000, 20,000. He can give it easy. But if he's not in that position, don't make it hard for him to get married. And that's what we are seeing now. People in Muslim countries, Ikhwan, may Allah guide them, those who prevent them from getting married. They are 40, they're not married yet. 40. That's, he has to, he's supposed to have grandchildren now. 40, he's, mashallah, newly wed. 40. Imagine if a woman passes 45. Who wants to marry her? People have to fear Allah, Ikhwan. So that we can talk a long time. We don't have time. So to choose the right husband is very important. So don't uh, degree and all that stuff. You know, most people who ask for degree, ask them, you have degree? Wallahi, I challenge you, ask them, you have a degree? In which science? In ripping people off? And cheating in the shop? That's the degree, mashallah. Yeah, Ikhwan, we have to look at ourselves before we look at our rulers. We're saying, oh, rulers, may Allah curse them. Ya, yeah, look at us, Ikhwan. What are we doing to the deen of Allah? Look at us. If the Prophet ﷺ woke up now and came to see us, he would go back. Some Sahaba used to say, I don't recognize anything we used to do except Salah in the Masjid. What do we say now? When people use everything to do Fasad, then they say the ruler. Yeah, what is the ruler to do with you? Nothing. And if you are like this, if you are rotten here, Allah brings ruler who punishes you. Because you don't fear Allah, so maybe you will fear Him. You don't fear Allah. Because you look now at Saudi. The woman says, I want a car, a house, a driver, and this. I don't have, I would like that. I would like a driver and a car and a house, mashallah. And the people don't have it. So what do they do? They leave them and go somewhere where it's cheaper to get married. Good, alhamdulillah, do it. Maybe they will learn when they're 50, they're not married yet. So we have to fear Allah. We have to fear Allah. We are not saying the ulama. This is what the ulama is saying. I'm not saying anything from myself. The ulama are not saying, give your daughter for nothing and everyone who comes from the street. No. But don't go to the other extreme. Don't go to the other extreme. By stipulating things Allah even didn't say at all. And wallahi, in times of fitna, in times where there is too much haram, the person who fears Allah is poor. Why? He doesn't want to go into this business because it's haram. He doesn't want to take this because it's haram. So he fears Allah. And we come and say, you have money? No, go. So we have to fear Allah, whoever we are. The general principles in marriage, once the correct, and there are few of them, once the correct husband is chosen, who has a good deen, good character, then, alhamdulillah, we get married. And the general uh, marriage life, all the principles that apply, the general principles that apply to all of us as Muslims in the society apply to the marriage even in greater degree. I.e., for example, to treat someone as you would like to be treated. To treat your wife as you would like to be treated. To treat your husband as you would like to be treated. I'm coming to the more specific rights of the husband. But I want to start with the general. To fear Allah wherever you are. The hadith about anger. And Allah said in Surah Al-Imran, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ al الْغَيْظِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنِ النَّاسِ Allah يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Those who contain غَيْظِ, that is extreme anger. Not people who say every time, I want divorce from you, in the, on the side of the women. 
Every time she gets angry, yeah, I want khula. Get, uh, give, uh, I give you my mahar and that's it. That is not correct. When you say to your friend you're angry, you don't say, I'm no friend anymore. That's it. I'm never going to speak. That's a person who can't manage himself. So every person must learn that marriage life is not a football we play around with. And especially if you have children. Children are not football. Some people think it is. Some women think, no problem, I divorced this man, I marry another one. How do you know? If you don't fear Allah. So this applies to everyone. To rely on Allah in times of difficulty, that applies in marriage. Now we don't rely on Allah much. We rely on the social services. We rely on the family. And unfortunately, most families, they don't say, they don't give good advice. Also, uh, being generous to other people. That applies to your husband before anyone else. Uh, preferring someone over yourself. All these are makarimul akhlaq. From the good manners, they apply to your husband more than to anyone else and to your children, if you have children. And that is why it is very important for the man and the woman. And today we are talking about the woman to get ready for marriage. And that is partly responsibility of the parents. And once she grows up, it is also her responsibility. That means that she has to learn certain things. And she has maybe to leave certain things. So she can't be a man. I walk in a park in Leicester, Ikhwan, and I hear girls, Muslim girls. I had to once, a couple of days ago, to talk to them, swearing, wearing khimar and everything. Swearing, like men do. Even men, I, it's nasty. Swearing like men, like bad men. Is this preparation for marriage? Imagine uh, someone marries her. Alhamdulillah, who's that? She's gonna swear at him every time. Everything, nothing is good, swear. What is this? The beauty of everyone is doing what they created for Ikhwan. The beauty of a man is what? To be a man. Have you ever seen a man that tries to be a woman? I've seen, it's disgusting. Wallahi, it's disgusting. Have you ever seen a woman that tries to be a man? The same. Because the beauty of a woman is in her being a woman. And even those kathabun, those liars and hypocrites and enemies of Islam, they know that and they try to make the woman look beautiful. And they tell her other things. Because the beauty of the woman is in being a woman. That's what attracts men. And what attracts a woman, normal I mean, Normal woman is that a man is a man. He's not a woman. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has cursed those men who resemble, try to resemble women, and those women who try to resemble men. For that reason, it's important for the girl or for the young woman to prepare for marriage. Because marriage is where she will fulfill herself. Nowadays, they're telling her a different story. What marriage? You're still young. Was you supposed to get married when you're 60 or something? I don't understand. You know, some parents are crazy, I think. Sorry to say this. But they say to her, especially to a woman, to a young lady, what marriage? You are young. What, when is she supposed to get married? When she's old? What logic is this? Oh, you've got university still. Is that uh, something to prevent and stop her from getting married? She must be prepared for getting married. She must learn how to cook, how to look after her husband. All these are important, how to look after children. No, no, she has to learn other things because the husband will get her someone to do it for her. MashaAllah, as a second wife or something. Or as a... As a what is it? I mean, this is strange, strange mentality by some people. They don't teach the, the girls and the young women anything almost. 
Some brothers say she can't even cook eggs. What's this? Even I can cook eggs. And maybe he exaggerates, but I don't know. That's what some brothers, they come and say. Whatever takeaway in restaurant, Ikhwan, is the best in the world, someone says, it's not like simple food cooked at home. All of us know it. There's no way near it. Just bread and something simple is the best. Cooked at home. So the lady has to learn something. Not everything. She doesn't have to be a master chef or something. No, some simple things. Especially the food of her people. If she gets married to them, which is mostly the case. So if she's Pakistani, she should learn Pakistani cuisine. And that normally happens if the mother knows that and teaches her. So that is very important. She must be prepared. And of course, like I said, the man must be prepared, but that was dealt with last week. The house, once she gets married, is her domain. That is her, even if it's a little house, even if it's a tent, she has to understand that that is her domain. That is where she is. Because Allah said, وَقَرْنَا فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّا وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَا تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ الْأُولَى وَاقِمْنَا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتِينَا الزَّكَاءَ That stay in your houses. Even though it's the house of the husband normally. In your houses. Because that's her domain. That's where she is. That's her. And there are shayateen, as you know, who say, oh, why should she be always chained to the sink? Who is chained to the sink? Allah alam, I don't know. I've never seen a woman chained to the sink. Maybe if you are sick, then you think like that. Who is chained to the sink? Who is going to do your washing up? Tell me. Who is going to clean your toilet? Why don't you say chained to the toilet then? These are shayateen, ikhwan. People shouldn't listen to them. They call it emancipation when the woman is outside. What is this emancipation? Even when a man is outside, he doesn't feel nice. How about a woman? So don't listen to the shayateen who say, your house is your chain to the sink. You, your life is going past and all you do is cook and clean and look after the children. What am I supposed to do? Break Guinness Book of Records or something? The longest jump. Who cares about that? So what he jumped? Allah alam. Okay, jump. Mashallah. Who cares? They compete. Who jumps higher? What? So what? He's the champion of the world. He's he champion of the world in anything else. I can jump all my life and be a loser. You know, people exaggerate things to the extent that's rubbish. Or oh, he's the one who plays cricket the best. So what? So they tell the women that that is, Marshall, that is the best. Why don't you become the best weightlifter in the world? What is this? What the best thing that you can do? And that is non-Muslims say it. I heard it with my own ears. The best job and the most important for the woman is the house. The house, that is her number one responsibility. Nothing else, not work, not nothing. Her responsibility in front of Allah. Because the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith, not weak. Narrated by Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Ibn Umar that the Prophet ﷺ said regarding everyone's responsibility. And he said, وَالْمَرْأَةُ رَاعِيَةٌ فِي بَيْتِ زَوْجِهَا وَهِيَ مَسْؤُولَةٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهَا And the woman is the shepherd in her husband's house and she will be asked about it. What, which other job did the Prophet ﷺ say she will be asked about it? So these people are shayateen because they want the, the family to break up. They want the husband to become the wife. And the wife, the husband. That is unacceptable. That is unacceptable. Because the husband is responsible for the family. As the Prophet said in the same hadith. And Allah said in Surah An-Nisa, as I said, women, the women. 
Ar-rijalu qawwamun ala nisa Qawwamun means in charge They are over them And Allah said Ulal-rijali alayhi nadaraja And some say No it doesn't mean that You know some women And men Who are like women Affected by So called emancipation They say You know these ayat They don't mean what you guys are saying What do they mean? They try their best None of the ulama said what they say. They're not even ulama. None. Nowadays everyone speaks. Every shaitan speaks. Because there are shayateen who own TV channels. So they invite their friend from the shayateen. They say, you want to speak? Yeah, you want to bash that uh, ayah? Billah. They say, yes. I know what to say. And they come and they give them platform and they spread this, the poison. And weak minds, they listen to them. And they believe. They say, no, it means woman is the same. She can, she's, actually, she can be in charge of the man. The man is in charge. Qawwamun means qawwam. Allah said, Bima Allahu ba'dahum ala ba'd. Because he, well, how he preferred some of them over some. Wa bima anfaqu min amwalihim. And because of what they spend from their wealth. Who spends in the family? Someone will say, both. No, it's the responsibility of the husband. He must spend for the mahar, for the dowry. He must spend his responsibility to provide her with somewhere to, to live. His responsibility, and that these are from the rights of the woman. His responsibility to provide her with everyday needs like food and what to wear. She doesn't have to, 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 to wear anything unless he provides her. And then Allah said, Fasalihat. Who are the Salihat? He didn't leave to weak minds and munafiqs to define who is Salihat. Because there is a huge attack on Islam Ikhwan, now. And the attack is mostly directed at women. Because if they can upset the women, the whole family is upset. It's true. So a clever woman must realize that. So Allah said, فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتِ The salihat, the pious women, the good women, that they are loved by Allah, they are the ones qanitat. Qanitat means the ulama said, they obey their husbands. And that is one of the greatest rights of the husband over the wife. And when we say she must obey, they say, am I a slave? I heard all of it, what I'm saying, I heard with my ears. Am I a slave? So when you go and get a job and you obey your manager, are you a slave? Oh no, there you're not a slave, mashallah. But in the family you're a slave. And this I'm saying because alhamdulillah we have very good women. I'm saying this about those who are weak in their knowledge and iman. And they say such things. Am I a slave? Why is because he's a man? I'm supposed to be under him and things like that. This I heard with my own ears with people arguing. So these are not statements of believing women. Because believers, they say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We hear and we obey. That applies to men and the women. For that reason, Allah said, فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتٌ Qanitat is one of the greatest rights of the husband, which is that she obeys. Because the Prophet ﷺ said in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad and other books of hadith authenticated by ulama of hadith, including the alim of hadith of our time. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Shaykh Imam al-Albani, rahimahullah, and this hadith is in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad. That hadith is إِذَا صَلَّتِ الْمَرْأَةُ خَمْسَهَا When the woman prays her five prayers. وَصَامَتْ شَهْرَهَا And fasts her month, which is Ramadan. وَحَفِذَتْ فَرْجَهَا And protects her private parts. وَأَطَاعَتْ زَوْجَهَا And obeys her husband. قِيلَ لَهَا It will be said to her. أُدْخُلِ الْجَنَّةَ مِنْ أَيِّ أَبْوَابِهَا شِئْتِ 
enter the Jannah from any gate you wish. Ya yeah, Ikhwan, how much do we as men need to do to gain that? How much do we need to do to gain that? And now the enemies of Islam, they're spreading poison. They're saying, why do you have to obey him? And they're saying, maybe he's crazy. He will tell me to do bad things, jump up and down or something. Some people say that. Alhamdulillah, that's good for your fitness. But that is, of course, a joke. But on a serious note, which husband is that crazy to tell you things that are not pleasing to Allah? And if he does, you have people to help you. I help you, guarantee. No one in the world, I guarantee if someone wrongs you, call me. I will do what I can to talk to your husband. There are many, many people like that who will help you, inshallah. And before the people, you have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is one of the greatest rights of the man, is when he says in a nice way, because that is how we should speak to each other, the woman should reply in a nice way. He says, please, could you wash my clothes? She shouldn't say the washing machine is there. He knows where the washing machine is because he's the one who bought it. <laughs> and he nearly killed himself unloading it. And he nearly killed himself fitting it in that tight space. He knows better than you where the washing machine is. Or when he says, could you cook us some nice food tonight? She says, no. Mashallah. Is that a good answer? That is not good living. And Allah said to the man in Surah An-Nisa, وَعَشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And live with them in a good way. The same applies to the women. Live with them, with the husband, in a good way. Do not be rude to him. And one of the uh, hadith, a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ was asked, which women are best or the better? And he said, Alati tuti'uhu idha amar. And this is narrated by different versions in the tafsir books and different uh, books of hadith. This particular one narrated by Imam Ahmad and Imam al Nasai, and it is authentic. The one that obeys her husband. Obedience doesn't mean whatever he says you do the other way around. That is not obedience, that is disobedience. وَتَسُرُّهُ إِلَىٰ إِذَا نَظَرْ And she pleases him when he looks at her. Not when he looks at her. بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ لَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَةَ إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَهِ رَاجِعُونَ And all the other dua of morning and evening and night and sleeping and waking up. And what is this? And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, None of you should come home at night when you've been traveling. That applies to us. If you are coming home at night, let her know. So you don't go back to where you came from. Because you see something you didn't expect. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, so that the one whose husband was away prepares for him. And her, he specifically mentioned the hair. So the hair is not everywhere. These are hadith, ikhwan, not because they are, someone might say, who cares? No believer says that. The Prophet ﷺ said it. If the Prophet ﷺ words mean anything to us, then that should be implemented. So if the husband says, I'm coming 10 o'clock, be ready. She should be ready. She should be happy. Yani why should a hotel hostess smile to us and our wife shouldn't smile to us? Hotel, what do they get from us? Money. That's it. They call it even the hospitality business. Hello, good evening, sir. How are you doing? We come home. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. Mashallah. How are you doing? Good. Alhamdulillah. I go in bed. I go to bed. I go sleep. What is this? Some families, they, t they tell us, 
they suffer from this. That is not good treatment. So the one who, when he looks, he's pleased. She doesn't have to be beauty queen or something, but she has to look after herself. The same as the man, but like I said, the man was talked about last week. And the Prophet ﷺ said, وَتَحْفَظُهُ فِي نَفْسِهَا وَمَالِهِ And she keeps him, and she keeps his honor in herself and his wealth. So any wealth he leaves, she doesn't waste it. Also, the Prophet ﷺ said, one of the rights of the husband is that she doesn't allow anyone whom he doesn't want into the house. So if he says, this uh, lady friend of yours, you know, I don't really like her to come. And she says, no, it doesn't matter, you know, she is this. But he knows she makes problems between them. Then she has to listen to him. Especially those women who are negative influence upon the wife. Because he sees what she doesn't see sometimes. Just like a good ruler sees and knows what we don't know. Just like a good manager of a company and we are workers knows and sees what we don't see and know. So we have to have trust between the husband and wife. All these are common sense, you know. But Allah reinforced them. The Prophet ﷺ reinforced them so that our common sense doesn't differ with someone who is crazy, who doesn't have common sense, and he calls craziness common sense. That is why we have these things. One of other greatest rights, even though we have minors, you can't avoid it, is to respond to her husband when he asks her to have intimate relations, sexual relations with him. And even the Prophet ﷺ said, even if she is on a camel. Because a woman is not like a man. Also the Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih Muslim, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ By the one in whose hand my soul is, by Allah. مَا مِنْ رَجُلٍ يَدْعُ مْرَأَتَهُ إِلَى فِرَاشِهِ There is not a man who calls his wife to his bed. فَتَأْبَى عَلَيْهِ and she refuses. إِلَّا كَانَ الَّذِي فِي السَّمَاءِ سَاخِطًا عَلَيْهَا حَتَّى يَرْضَى عَنْهَا Except the one above the heavens, Allah is angry with her until the husband is pleased with her. So when we say that, some weak-minded, weak iman people say, what is this? This is a hadith. And that is the seriousness of this. Because a lot of problems occur between husband and wife because of that. So fear Allah, sister. Also the Prophet ﷺ said, any woman who doesn't respond when her husband tells her to come to, her, to his bed, and I'm talking about without any medical problem, normal. Because people say, oh, if she has med... Juan, not all women are disabled, you know. We are talking about normal relations. We're not talking about ill women. Yes, of course, she has an excuse. Or disabled woman. We're not talking about that. We're talking about abled, bodied, and mind, and everything. Alhamdulillah. The Prophet ﷺ said, the one who refuses the woman, the angels curse her until the morning. So the woman has to fear Allah. Because a lot of women, they say unacceptable things. If you don't do this, then there is no this for you. What is this? Did Allah allow that? Then the man can say, if there is no this, then there is no this. And so on until there is divorce, yeah? Is that correct? It's like market, yeah? You don't give me what, I don't give you this uh, watch. You don't give me sex, get lost. What is this? Is this not normal relationship? 
And the sister, let me tell you something, in case you don't know. All men, that is a dodgy theory developed by me. But it is supported by scientific evidence. All men are wolves hunting sheep, which is women. Okay? All men. All kafir Muslim. Some men, they fear Allah. So they hunt sheep in a legal way. And some, they don't fear Allah. They hunt any sheep anywhere, any network, any time. So when a person fears Allah and he chooses to do it in a halal way, you must fear Allah. And not force him to do and to think things, and that is a very important thing for the man and should be for the woman. Because what is important to the husband should be important to the wife. <clears throat> that is why uh, these things are from the greatest rights of the husband, to, to obey him, not to let anyone come into the house, to stay in the house unless with his permission. So does it mean someone may say, I am a prisoner? No, of course not. You can go where you like, but not like some people do, some sisters, may Allah guide them. They leave the house, the husband doesn't know. He comes, there is no one there. He wants to eat, she says, buy some takeaway. Who cares? What is this? If you come and there is no house, and husband says, stay in a hotel, who cares? Would you accept it? No. So why are you not fulfilling his rights? His right is also to help him and serve him in the house. Someone says, am I a servant to him? Yes, because he is killing himself to be a servant to you. He is killing himself, Ikhwan. Husband, correct husband, is killing himself to keep the house, to keep the kids, to keep the wife. Why should the wife be any different? Why should she not be a servant to someone she loves? Because Allah said, Hunna libasul lakum antum libasul lahunna. You are like close to them and they are like close to you. Why should you remove your clothes and not care? That is incorrect. Because everyone has their job. The job of the woman is the house. Of course, we, like I said, we're talking about a normal situation. Not when she gets ill. In that case, even when she is not ill, we should try and help her because woman is weak. Of course, one of the kabair, major sins, not in Islam, in the customs to help the woman wash the dishes. That is the greatest sin. Don't let your friends find out. You're dead. The next meeting you have with them, that's it. We, we, we heard <laughs> that you wash dishes. So who cares? That's my wife. I help her. If she can't wash dishes, I wash. But sister, let me tell you something. Don't make your husband a dishwasher. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ used to help, but Aisha said, radiallahu anha, I couldn't fulfill my Ramadan, which I missed, because every woman misses some Ramadan. I couldn't do it, do qada of it, until Sha'ban, just before the next Ramadan, because I was busy with the Prophet ﷺ. And she never said, Oh, I'm so tired and... Fatima said to the Prophet I'm so tired, give me a servant because I'm, I'm serving Ali all the time. This his daughter, Ikhwan, Fatima, radiallahu anha, he said, do dhikr. Now say, uh, brother, you know you really necking my, wife, my daughter, you're killing her, what's this? Nowadays, yeah, mashallah. Yeah, what's this? She's complaining and... Now we have a dishwasher and foot washer and head washer and every washer. Aisha has nothing, no servant. She does herself. Fatima, no servant. Asma bint Abi Bakr. Who is the daughter of who? 
the second man after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi we have to think about these things. She, I gave you the story of Asma very shortly when I came to talk about her. And the hadith I gave you was that her husband, as Zubair, one of the ten give, given the promise of Jannah in one hadith. Otherwise, there are more than ten. She used to carry things for miles on her head. And the Prophet ﷺ saw her. And she didn't say, Billah, what's wrong with Zubair? He didn't say that. So we have to understand that marriage is a cooperation. It's not one-way street where the husband does everything and the wife sits. So, mashallah, I just look at her. Allahu Akbar. Why did I get married then? I can then get a servant, do everything. No mahar, nothing. No obligations. And don't forget my sister. And this I say, Wallahi, Ikhwan, I swear by Allah. I will say this to my own daughter and my own sister. Because that's how Sahaba used to be. When the Prophet became angry with Hafsa, Umar didn't come and say, uh, Prophet, fear Allah, what's wrong? He said to his daughter, what did you do? Well, how did you upset him? Don't you fear Allah? Don't you fear? And Allah revealed what Umar said in Surah Al-Talaq. Don't you fear if he divorces you, his own daughter? Allah will give him better wife. So this I'm saying, so that the, the life, and like I said, today is advice for her, not for him. So that the life, and we are running out of time, I will finish now, is as good as it is possible. And I advise in times of difficulty to think of the great women, like Hajar, the wife of Ibrahim, alayhi salam who was left alone in the desert with her baby son, Ismail, alayhi salatu wasalam, and Ibrahim said to her only that Allah told me to do it, and she said then he won't leave us. And she has nothing, no water except little, no food except little. And Allah made Zamzam, until now Zamzam is working. Zamzam. And he made people come to Mecca. And remember the wife of Fir'aun. Your husband, I'm sure, is not Fir'aun. Even if he tries, he can't be. Fir'aun is the record in being nasty, in being kafir, in being zalim. And his wife asks Allah to prepare her good place in Jannah. That is, should be our focus. And also I advise finally, and if you have any questions, inshallah, we can take after Isha. Because it's important, in my view, this topic is very important. And please, sisters, if you have any questions, I'll be very happy to answer them if I can. Prepare them now if you can. I will stay as long as necessary. Finally, I advise everyone to read what is in the Quran and Sunnah regarding marriage relationships. Because many times these problems occur because that's what we are trying to avoid, problems in the marriage. They occur because we are not aware of what Allah said and the Prophet ﷺ said regarding marriage, each, each other's rights, each other's obligations, and things that we must do, things we must not do. These are very important. One of the things I advise you to read is the hadith of Umm Zara, very famous hadith. It's narrated by Bukhari, Abu Dawood, and others. In Bukhari, it's in the book of marriage. Kitab al-Nikah. And the bab is Husn al-Mu'ashara or Husn al-Ishra. It's a long hadith. About 11 women, one of them is Umm Zara. It's a very beneficial hadith. Please read it and benefit from it. May Allah make Muslim families live in harmony and know each other's rights and obligations and fulfill them for the sake of Allah and have happy life. That, what, that is what we are trying to achieve and that is what was witnessed when the people used to fear Allah because the ulama said, and I finished by that, the only known case of khul' was one in the time of the Sahaba. 
Khul' means when the woman requests divorce, which is she has a right. Wallahu a'lam wa subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika shahadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man walah amma ba'd the brother Zahullah Khaira is asking for advice to a sister who is marrying a married man I would like to give advice actually to the man first My advice to the man is to fear Allah in relation to both of his wives, his wife present and his wife to be. And that is because it's a big responsibility. And Allah said in Surah An-Nisa, فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا فَوَاحِدًا أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ That if you fear you won't be able to do justice between the wives, then only one, or what your right hands possess, because in the past they used to be slaves, men and women. Because there used to be many wars and people who used to be taken prisoner used to be either slaves or be killed or be exchanged for something else. So the man who wants to marry a second or third or fourth wife, he must fear Allah in relation to his responsibilities. And the ulama, they say that he must divide time equally in terms of the night, staying the night fairly. And he must also be fair in his dealings with them financially, according to their needs, and according to what Allah said. And for him to know that the best women, the wives of the Prophet والسلام, and may Allah be pleased with them, they used to be jealous. But that doesn't mean for the wives to exceed the limits set by Allah. As for the sister who wants to marry our, a brother who is already married, then I would like to commend her first of all, because this is something that is seen as almost zina in some circles. I heard with my own ears, and the reason I say that is so that some people don't think that I'm imagining, that some women say that when a man marries a second wife, it is treachery on his side. And in Arabic, she, she, she used the word khiyana, which is worse than treachery. And of course, that's not the case. It is something Allah allowed. Whether the circumstance is right or not, that is not something for anyone to say because they, those circumstances have to be analyzed individually. But it is not haram. And Allah allowed, some ulama said, even it is better. Some ulama said it's permissible. <clears throat> For that reason, I would like to commend that sister and say that this is not demeaning you because the best women who are bet much better than you, the wives of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, our mothers, they are mothers of the believers. Because Allah said, ummahatuhum." His wives are their mothers, the believers' mothers. They used to be in marriage, sharing with other wives. Also, it was 
a practice of the Sahaba very widely spread, not like some people say it was done only in exceptional circumstances. It is not the case. Of course, we live in strange times. In times when, as some sheikh told me, in his country, some women told him that she would prefer her husband to commit zina than to marry a second wife. And these are statements that are unacceptable for a believing man or woman. That is why we live in strange times. So I would like to advise this sister, first of all, to fear Allah. Because whoever fears Allah, Allah is with them. Secondly, to know her rights and her obligations towards her husband and towards her sister who is married to the same man and to not expect not to be jealous. That is something natural, but to control that. And like I said, to fear Allah at all times as much as possible and to resolve any issues that she may have with the husband or with the other wife in an amicable manner. Because if it is not resolved in an amicable manner, that will end in divorce and that is not something that is, that's, is loved by Allah because Allah said in the same surah, Surah An-Nisa, was sulhu khair, regarding reconciling between the husband and the wife. That sulh is better to reconcile. So that's all I have to say because time is late and if anything else, my number is alhamdulillah widely available with the brothers and everyone else. If you uh, want to clarify anything or you want my email address, uh, most of the time my phone is on 24-7. And I'm not one of those who buy a mobile to play games on it. Because we have a number of brothers, unfortunately, may Allah guide them, who almost never answer their phone. And I always say that I had the... Allah made it possible for me to call Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin a few times when he was alive, rahimahullah. And every time he answered, I think, on the third or second ring. Wallahi, Ikhwan, who is more busy, you or Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin? By that time, he was very old. Sheikh Al-Albani, Rahimahullah, he used to sit from 8 p.m. till 10 p.m. every day just to answer the phone. So we shouldn't think something of ourselves which we are not, Ikhwan. And then we spend time on football, cricket, and every other rubbish that we can imagine. Because it's at the end of the day, games, nothing, nothing benefits us, wallahi. And then we don't answer our phones. Yes, we understand when most of the time someone answers the phone and sometimes he doesn't. That's okay, no problem. But when 99%, 95% of the time someone doesn't answer the phone, no one wants to call you, believe me. So my phone, alhamdulillah, is open and if it's not, I normally reply to messages or voicemail. The next question is, what if your husband asks you to leave the house? Should you, I think it should be leave because it says leave the house, but it should be leave, I think. Should you leave the house or not? And if you're looking for a baby and your husband doesn't help you. So these are two questions. The first one, if your husband says to leave the house, of course, we know nothing about the situation. So it's difficult to say why he said it, how... In a normal circumstance, a husband wouldn't say it. And under normal circumstances, he shouldn't ask the wife to leave the house. So I can't really answer that without knowing the full details. As for the, the woman wanting to have a baby, if I understand it correctly, and the husband not, then that is not allowed for him to do. Because we have brothers, may Allah guide them, who marry women and they say, I, I don't want to have babies. That is a condition that's not acceptable, Ikhwan. Because that shows that you're not serious. 
You only want sexual relations and that's it. I'm not even sorry to say it. Because a woman has a right to have children. So you are not allowed to deny her that right. So this woman who is, wants to have a baby and the husband, husband doesn't help you, she should seek help from this masjid, from any other masjid, from individuals. Because unfortunately we don't have anyone to force people to do something. Because we don't have here in this country qada where we can do qada. To go to the qadi, the judge and say, the woman says, because to go to court you have to be rich. And this court is not Islamic. But even they might force him to, to have children. Because it's not allowed to deny her that right. Allahu alam. The next question, I have a long-term health condition which causes great difficulty <clears throat> and pain, etc. with the young family. I do try to fulfill my duties to my husband, but he doesn't help me. Please advise. These are exceptional circumstances. So your wife or your husband, because if you are a woman, your husband may be ill or may be disabled or may become disabled after an accident or something. These are part, all this is part of life, Ikhwan. So if, if your wife becomes ill or disabled, it doesn't mean that she no longer is your wife. Ali bin Abi Talib, sorry, Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu didn't witness Ghazwat Badr and some munafiqs who wanted to kill Uthman and they succeeded unfortunately who were against Uthman radiallahu anhu. They used to say he didn't take part in Badr. These are munafiqs. We fear for their Islam, that they are Muslims even. Because the Prophet ﷺ told Uthman to stay with his wife, who was his daughter والسلام, because she was ill. He didn't take part in Badr. What are you talking about? Work and things like that. Sometimes you have to take time off work. Sometimes you have to cook. Sometimes you have to wash dishes. Sometimes you have to change nappies of your kids if your wife can't do it. They agree. So for that reason, we must understand that life together is life together for good times and bad times, for happy times and difficult times. It's not we are family when we have happy times, when we have difficult, we are not family. That's not correct. So for that reason, uh, the husband, if what you say is true, the husband should help you. But also, you should try and help him in any way you can. So may Allah relieve your difficulties and uh, make improve your life with your husband. Now, I, I, any more questions? I believe nothing. Alhamdulillah. Naam, tafadal, yes, brother. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah. She didn't mention that. But if there is a medical condition, like what? When they can't have children. <clears throat> Any examination that uncovers the aura of man or woman is haram until proven otherwise. I.e., the ulama said, and unless it is absolutely necessary. Because most examinations of this kind involve uncovering the aura of the man as well as the woman. So uncovering the aura of the man in front of another man is haram, let alone another woman. Uncovering the aura of the woman is even worse in front of a man. Because the hijab of men and women and the aura of men and women is different. They are different. For that reason, 
No such examination must take place unless it's absolutely necessary. And the whole situation has, has been explained to one of the ulama and he says, yes, it's permissible to do so. I hope it satisfies. Naam. Wallahu a'lam. Jazakum Allah khairan. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Jazakum Allah khairan for your patience. Oh, Rabbah. Oh, Rabbah.